you look at videos of Ashgabat, the capital city of Turkmenistan, one thing clearly stands out. And that is the site of domineering expensive marble covering just about all the buildings. This peculiar capital has gained itself a Guinness World Record for having about 80% of its buildings made of white marble, mostly imported from China or Vietnam. In Ashgabat, it is not rare to see gold-plated statues, domes and mausoleums, but what could be more intriguing are the perfectly paved roads that lead into nowhere in particular. Or perhaps what could have captured your curiosity is the fact that the entire city seems to be empty. The apartment buildings you're looking at cost anywhere between $200,000 to $500,000, despite majority of the citizens of Turkmenistan living on less than $200 a month. This means that the average Turkmenian citizen has to work for a minimum of 83 years to be able to afford one of these apartments. The capital city is fairly new compared to others in world, having been built between the 1950s and 1990s, after being hit by an earthquake that let 90% of all the buildings destroyed. The casualties are believed to be between 10,000 to 100,000, a ballpark figure that cannot be correctly stated because the media was barred from covering it. Since then it has been rebuilt with a brutalist-style architecture favored by post-Stalin Soviet architects. The former dictator of the country, Sapar Morat Niyazov, built the capital as a mere showpiece rather than making the city more livable. A single visit to Ashgabat today might be one of the most surreal experiences in your life. Oh, we should also mention that Ashgabat overtook Hong Kong in 2021 to become the world's most expensive city. This is because Turkmenistan has been grappling with a long-running economic crisis that has plunged many citizens into poverty. With shortages of subsidized food, accelerating since 2016, the situation has worsened, with people waiting hours in line to try to buy more affordable food products, often being turned away empty-handed. The current president, Garbengoli Bardamohamedov, however, has chosen to focus his efforts into something different. In May, Turkmenistan's government began a substantial expansion of Ashgabat, with the long-serving president pledging to make the capital one of the most opulent cities in the world. Technically, Turkmenistan is not a poor country. It has the sixth largest proven natural gas reserves, only ahead of other economic giants like Saudi Arabia, the United States, Qatar, and Russia. But the average Turkmenian is poorer than the average citizens of the other countries. The country remains one of the most secretive and opaque regimes in history, some calling it worse than North Korea because of its problematic human rights record. What makes this country so expensive and why are there stark extremes between the rich and the poor? In this video we will explore the history of Turkmenistan and its rather strange economy. Welcome to another project. Turkmenistan is a landlocked country in Central Asia, bordered by Uzbekistan to the southwest, Kazakhstan to the north, and Iran and Afghanistan to the south. Just like its neighbor Central Asia, it is a region scattered with the remnants of once powerful empires. Turkmenistan was once part of the Persian Empire before being invaded and ruled by Alexander the Great, then by the Achaemenid Empire of ancient Iran that introduced Islam in the country. In the 13th century, it was conquered by Mongols, one of the most powerful empires in history, who also controlled China and most of Central Asia at that time. Russian forces began occupying Turkmen territory late in the 19th century and by 1881, Turkmenistan was annexed, together with adjoining Uzbek territory, it was forced into the Russian Empire. In 1990, the country declared independence from the Soviet Union with then-communist leader Sapar Morat Niyazov continuing as Turkmenistan's chief of state, replacing communism with a unique brand of independent nationalism reinforced by a pervasive cult of personality. By cult of personality, we mean the typical dictators that rose to prominence during that time after countries gained independence from their former rulers. Cult of personality dictatorships are authoritarian regimes virtually devoid of a genuine political culture. Usually, they are the ones with bloody pasts, 
that rely on massive propaganda campaigns to misrepresent reality and to grind the population under. Fear, terror, and party indoctrination are their primary tools to keep people in line. He was one of the world's most dictatorial, tyrannical, and brutal dictators at the time, cultivating a cult of personality around himself and imposing his idiosyncrasies on the country, such as renaming Turkmen months and days of the week, after passages to his autobiography, Runama. He made it compulsory to study the Runama in schools, universities, and government organizations. New government workers were tested on the book during job interviews, and a driving test in Turkmenistan included a test on the book's principles. In 2005, he shut down all rural libraries and hospitals outside of Ashgabat, despite the fact that more than half of the country's population resided in rural regions at the time. He once said, if people are sick, they can come to Ashgabat. Turkmenistan had the lowest life expectancy in Central Asia during his reign. Some of the laws he imposed in the country are ridiculously funny. For example, Niyazov banished dogs from the capital Ashgabat because of their unappealing odor, and right before his death, Niyazov banned the use of lip syncing at public concerts in 2005. He ordered the construction of his own mausoleum adjacent to a massive mosque which is currently guarded by the same goose-stepping soldiers that protect Lenin's grave in Moscow's Red Square. He also ordered a golden statue of himself on a galloping horse, atop a 65-foot high marble cliff that rotates to face the sun. However, everything comes to an end. In 2006, Nyanov suffered a heart attack that caused his sudden death which left a complete power vacuum, as his cult of personality, comparable to the one of eternal president Kim Il-sung of North Korea, had left out the naming of a successor. So, what makes Turkmenistan so expensive? Before we continue, please consider hitting like and subscribe below, it goes a long way in supporting the channel. Turkmenistan, rich in natural resources and home to the world's sixth largest gas reserves, can afford such opulence, a glittering capital with marble structures. This is the picture that official propaganda seeks to create in order to persuade the public that Turkmenistan is one of the world's most affluent countries. Meanwhile, if international enterprises wish to enter the market, they must improve their image. For energy giants, they are attracted by around 10% of the world's total gas reserves. Some are willing to obey the official and unwritten norms of doing business in Turkmenistan in order to gain access to it. As a result, their employees pay exorbitant fees for practically everything, from housing to food. Turkmenistan suffers as a result of its lack of diversification. Turkmenistan's close neighbors all have abundant oil resources, therefore, they aren't interested in purchasing the country's main export, gas. It also has a very poor human rights record. Discrimination against the country's ethnic minorities remains in practice and universities have been encouraged to reject applicants with non-Turkmen surnames, especially ethnic Russians. On top of this, the country has banned all free press and communication, banning all satellite dishes in Turkmenistan the same month. The statement issued by the government indicated that all existing satellite dishes would have to be removed or destroyed. Internet access is also filtered and websites to which the government objects are blocked. Blocked websites include opposition news media, YouTube, many social media including Facebook and encrypted communications applications. However, Gurbanguly Bardamohamedov stepped down as president on 19 March 2022 after a snap presidential election deemed as neither free nor fair, in which his son, Serdar Bardamohamedov, won, succeeding his father's 15-year-long authoritarian tenure as president. What does this mean for the future of Turkmenistan? Will the economy improve with the newly imposed president? Or will the vast difference between the political class and average Turkmenian remain the same? Let us know in the comments, we are always looking for your interesting takes. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video. To see why Switzerland has secret gold bunkers, click here, and to know more about how Taiwan secretly runs the world, click here. That's all we have for you today, thanks for watching.